From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hello and welcome to today's session of the 2021 AWS Global Public Sector Awards for the award of Best Migration Solution. I'm your host, Natalie Ehrlich, and now we are joined by very special guests. We have Omar Inam, Application Modernization Leader at Deloitte Consulting, and Bart Mason, Technology Lead for the Office of Recovery Services at the Utah Department of Human Services. Welcome, gentlemen, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for well, having us. Well, terrific. I'd love to hear more about your migration from mainframe to AWS. Bart, let's start with you. Um, the state of Utah has a mainframe system and we have our child support application that was first developed in 1996 on the mainframe written in COBOL. Um, the application served us well through the 24 years that we had it running on the mainframe. The issue was that the mainframe, it was getting difficult to find people who knew how to program in COBOL, but the biggest problems were any type of modernization. We were um, pretty much stuck to using what are called green screens. And there was no real easy way to do any type of modernization. And a lot of our applications that uh, were public facing or employee facing, a lot of those web applications had to be written in a separate system and set up to connect and talk to the mainframe system. So it was a system that served us well, but it was time to try and figure out what are we going to do about this? Because the mainframe was expensive and it, um, it was old technology that didn't let us advance to where we wanted to go in the future. So roughly about nine, uh, 2016, uh, we started to investigate what are the possible ways that we can migrate our child support application off the mainframe. And we went through uh, discussions such as a complete rewrite where we would start from the very beginning and rewrite our child support application. Um, the child support application is a case management and an accounting system. And if we would have done a total rewrite, we were told it would be upwards of 200 million dollars to do a complete rewrite. Um, we started looking at other possibilities and came across uh, one possibility and that is to do a migration off of the mainframe into the cloud. It would be a pre-session uh, pre where we could do a lift and shift and basically take the code, change it into Java and put it into uh, the cloud uh, running in EC2 instances. So it was an, we called it an intermediate step to modernization because it would get us one step to where we need to do, where we need to go. And for modernization, it helps us to, since the uh, program that it was, or the language it was migrated to was Java, it made it so that we could do modernization. And we decided that if we did a lift and shift from the mainframe to AWS, that we could modernize at our own pace. We could modernize screen by screen or function by function. So it gave us the ability to control uh, rollouts and uh, getting our application to where we needed to be. Terrific, and Omar, I'd love it if you could weigh in as well. What were, um, what was the support that you provided towards this migration? Yeah, of course. So uh, as Bart uh, pointed out, um, the state was looking for a approach that had um, high chance of success, uh, high, high pr probability of user adoption with minimal impact uh, to the organization. At the same time, have the ability to, for the state to maintain and, and modernize at their own pace. Um, so we worked with Bart and, and explained to him a few options. And one of the options was using a automated uh, code and data conversion approach uh, where we take uh, uh, legacy programming languages like uh, COBOL and convert them into, into Java, it's just like translating the code from one language to another. And in the process, we guarantee that your, your new system will work exactly, the, uh, 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 it will provide function, it will be functionally equivalent of 
uh, what you do currently, and 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 at, at the same time it minimizes the risk. At the, also allows um, uh, the state to uh, have no issues with their business continuity and, and additional training for their staff. So in, in a nutshell, we brought in a solution demonstrated uh, to Bard and team, and, and they bought into that idea that this is, this is exactly what they want to do as a first step. And as we speak, we are working with the state to help them take that uh, system in the cloud to the next level. Uh, now it the, now we have unlocked the potential of digital transformation. Uh, Bot can build uh, build mobile apps in front of that application. He, uh, the state can um, build new analytics capabilities for that. Their employees can be more productive in providing services to the citizen. Um, they can implement uh, now uh, native capabilities from AWS to implement. Uh, process automation, implement uh, some artificial intelligence-based uh, tools uh, to optimize the processes and make life easy and better for their employees. At the same time, more importantly, uh, serve the citizens in a, in a better way. Mm -hmm. And Bart, I'd love it if you could share some further details on some of the considerations that you had, um, such as risk and um, whether it could be used later in the future. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest risk to us was that if we, as we migrated off the mainframe, there's a risk that we have to recertify our, recertify our system with the Office of Child Support Enforcement in Washington, DC. When we build a system, a child support system, we're required to have them come in and do a assessment of our application and certify that it is uh, an application that can be used for child support. If we would have done a rebuild from scratch, the risk would be that first a rebuild from what we've seen can take anywhere from five to 10 years. Uh, I've already touched on how expensive it is, but it takes up to five or what we've seen up to 10 years to do a complete rewrite. And the risk for us was that if we did a complete rewrite, we would still be on the mainframe for quite a long time. And we would have to have our system recertified with OCSE and that can take anywhere from five to 10 years for a recertification too. So the risk was that if we did anything with a complete rewrite, it would be several, several years going through rewrites and recertifications to uh, get our system um, up and running uh, in AWS. And the other problem would be that taking that amount of time would also, it would bring us probably um, not up to date with the current technologies as we did our rewrite, because we'd be focused on rewriting that application and not taking advantages of um, services and applications that come up and can help us with our, with our rewrite. So one of the biggest risks was that we'd have to do a recertification when, with OCSE with the migration coming off the migration because it is a one-for-one -one migration where it went from COBOL to Java, we did not have to do a recertification. This allowed us to move the application as is and it functioned the exact same way that recertification was not a problem for us. OCC said that, <clears throat> told us that it was not a risk or an issue that we'd have to take on. So the biggest risk was recertification for us, but with the migration and moving into the cloud, we went through their security processes and uh, we came out without any big issues coming out of that. Fantastic, thank you. Omar, I'd love to go to you now. What are some of the unique benefits of working with AWS? Sure, um, as, I think the biggest benefit is their, the, the extensive um, services that are available and having the, uh, the proven platform where you, you where, which, which it cut down your operational costs drastically. So comparing the mainframe cost with uh, the Amazon cloud cost, clearly uh, the state has benefit, benefited a lot uh, from, from the uh, saving standpoint, infrastructure saving standpoint. Um, and at the same time now, as I said, the, the new the system is in the cloud running on open architecture on in the Java programming language. Um, the, uh, the AWS cloud provides us 
several uh, capabilities natively, which, al which allows uh, the state to use, to digitally transform uh, the experience for the citizens and employees by implementing modern um, uh, DevOps practices for, uh, for managing the, the operating the system, um, providing uh, new capabilities uh, to work workers and supervisors for, from analytics, for analytics to um, a business process automation, um, having better uh, um, call center integration capabilities and so forth. So there are endless opportunities and the state is in the process of uh, um, uh, executing on, on a prioritized list. Um, just before the pandemic hit, we worked with the state uh, to lay out the future for, for their system and for their organization in the form of a one day uh, innovation lab where major stakeholders uh, from the state uh, gathered with Deloitte and we worked through a prioritization process and determined uh, how we can take this system to the next level and really digitally transform the, uh, the, the system and in the process uh, provide new services and better services to uh, state employees and the citizens. Yeah, terrific insight there. Now, Bart, I'd like to shift it to you asking the same question. What are your thoughts on working with AWS? Why choose them for this? Um, we've always have been looking at moving a lot of our applications into the cloud. We've been looking at that for several years. Um, the advantages of moving to AWS is from my point of view and state's point of view is that AWS provides a lot of services and it provides the capability for us to do a lot more uh, for our applications. So for example, when we were on the mainframe, one of the biggest problems that we had was disaster recovery. Um, we had a disaster recovery site in the southern end of end of our state with another mainframe that we would sync up with our application. The problem was that we have over a hundred data connections. We connect to banks, external entities, internal entities. We have different type of connections. We have to do printing. We have to print checks and several things. Disaster recovery on the mainframe was something that we were never really capable of doing. We could get our application up and running, but it just sat on the mainframe. We had no data connections. All that was extremely difficult and extremely uh, expensive to do for disaster recovery on a mainframe and an alternate site. Moving to AWS, one of the biggest things for us was that disaster recovery requirement because now that we're in AWS, it makes it more easier for us to spin up servers when servers go down, restore servers when they go down. We have all of our data connections in one location. And as systems uh, become unrecoverable or have issues, it's easy for us to spin up another one or several in their place, or even our data connections because they're all located in one place and we're using them all of the time. So disaster recovery was one of the big key components for us. The other component was that as we uh, modernize our application, we're looking at what AWS services are out there to help us with modernization. We're looking at services such as AWS Batch to replace our batch system. We're looking at databases to replace the current database that we're using. We're looking at using containers to containerize our applications and our ORCIS application and also microservices. So moving out the mainframe was the first step and putting it all into uh, servers and an EC2 instance, but then we look and say, okay, how can we do this and make this more modern and run better and more efficient? And we, we started looking at all the AWS services that are out there that run outside uh, of an EC2 instance, for example, and we see that there's an endless possibility and endless capabilities that we have at our fingertips to say, okay, we're off the mainframe, let's modernize by moving to batch, or let's start looking at containers and things like that to help us with our application. So uh, disaster recovery and the available services that we can move to, to help us with our applications, what we look at. Well, thank you both so much for your insights. Bart Mason, Utah Department of Human Services, as well as Omar Inam, Deloitte Consulting and LLP. I'm your host for theCUBE. Thanks so much for watching.